Hello again, it's Dr. Harim Jafar. Uh, I'm periodontist. Uh, this is my second lecture on the new classification of periodontology. Before we start, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to my channel, HL Talent. So, previously, uh, we have uh, an overview uh, upon the lesson profile. Then we talked about the main changes uh, regarding the term and the concept. Then we came to the classification. In the classification, we talked about the health, periodontal health, gingivitis case, uh, and sites of inflammation and clinical healthy sites. And uh, today I'll talk about the staging and grading flowcharts. And uh, we are trying to focus more on the change that happened in this classification. So, where was the idea of staging and grading derived from? Actually, the new classification based on staging and grading was inspired by a system used in oncology, in which in this system, it will individualize the diagnosis and the case definition of furontitis patient. And it takes into account the multifactorial etiology of the disease the level of complexity of management and the risk of the disease recurrence or progression to facilitate optimal care and improving prognosis. It's easy to tell a patient, for example, and it's more convenient actually to tell them, for example, you are stage 3 periodontitis and the patient suddenly know What's, what should be done to the stage 3 periodontitis. He or she knows the guidelines which should be undertaken for treatment of the stage 3 periodontitis. Uh, also for stage 1, 2 and 4. So, uh, it will individualize the diagnosis and this is one of the most important things. And also, it depends on the multifactorial nature of the periodontitis. Nowadays, the periodontitis is just like a cancer in, of the mouth. So it has not the causative factor is not just a bacteria or a plug. Uh, it's also many modifying factors, many systemic risk factors. So according to the risk factors, we just categorize the complexity so as to know the, the types of management of the case. What does staging involve? What is staging? Actually, staging is equal to the severity in the previous classification. Staging classifies the severity and extent of current tissue loss. As we said, we have four stages. We have stage 1, stage 2, 3, and 4. It incorporates an assessment of the level of complexity. It will show the complexity of the disease. Not all the criteria that present in the flowchart is, is, uh, is to be fulfilled uh, on demand. Uh, nothing fully demanded for example like tooth loss it's not uh, something that uh, you you always depend on for the detection of or uh, uh, writing down the staging of the disease and also the masticatory dysfunction and occlusal trauma have been introduced to ensure the outcome of the disease process 
is fully understood in the term of function. It's not just a disease, the clinical feature, treatment of the clinical features. <clears throat> Sometimes you have drifting, you have loose tooth. So you should take into consideration the, the physiological parts of the disease, the physiological defects that happen due to the disease. So as to both functionally and aesthetically uh, treat the disease. And this is the flowchart of the uh, staging. This flowchart here, we have severity, complexity, extent, and duration distribution. Mm. And the severity, we depend on the interdental cow at the site of the greatest loss. We depend on the radiographic bone loss and we depend partly or partially on the tooth loss. For example, in stage 1, we have 1 to 2 millimeter attachment loss. Less than 50% of the bone is lost. Uh, but here, there is no tooth loss due to periodontitis. The tooth loss, it should be due to periodontitis when we take it in consideration in the other stage. Stage two, it's, it is three to four, and the coronal third from 15% to 33% or 30% of the bone is lost. Here again, there is no tooth loss. That's a criteria. In the stage three and four, both of them, the attachment loss should be more than five millimeter. Actually, this is a difficult, a very difficult uh, way of uh, scoring or uh, examination or detection of the severity of the disease, but uh, it's the most accurate one. In the stage three, mostly extending to the middle third of the of the bone loss extended to the middle third of the root and in the stage four mostly reaching the apical third of the root and here we have tooth loss due to periodontitis 40 or less than 40 but here in stage four five teeth or more than five teeth should be lost by periodontitis regarding the complexity We have local complexity, like, for example, in stage one, maximum probing shouldn't exceed the four millimeter, mostly horizontal bone loss. In stage two, shouldn't exceed five millimeter, and mostly horizontal bone loss. But in stage three and four, in stage three, Look at the complexity. Most of these changes happen in the complexity. For example, here we have probing depth more than more than six millimeter. Okay, and we have vertical bone loss more than three millimeter, or equal to three millimeter. We have frication involvement two or three. We have ridge defects. But in stage four, we have instead of that present in the uh, stage three we have also masticatory dysfunction we have secondary occlusal trauma due to tooth mobility and most of the mobilities are grade two we have severe ridge defects we have bite collapse we have drifting flaring and we have less than 20 teeth 10 in each opposing pairs are present inside the mouth so in this with, the, with these criteria we decide that this case the severity of this case is either four three two or one and according to the complexity it shows the complexity of the treatment that should be undertaken the extent and distribution For each stage, we should describe as 
an extent for example if we have uh, if we say that it's localized <laughs> sorry it should uh, it should affect the disease should affect 30 percent or less of the teeth and the generalized is more than that while we have molar incisor pattern in the extent this is synonym of localized aggressive periodontitis so when we say it's smaller in size of pattern we mean by that it's localized aggressive periodontitis for example in this case we have one to two millimeter clinical attachment loss for example <coughs> We have bone loss radiographically, radiographically less than 15%. There is no tooth loss due to periodontal disease. And the probing depth not exceeding 4 mm. So it is stage 1. While in this, we have 3 to 4 mm cal. Uh, nearly 30% of the bone loss happening. And there is no tooth loss pocket depth not not exceeding the five millimeter so this is stage two in stage three we have five millimeter of more cal bone loss beyond 33 to the middle of the root we have pocket of more than six millimeter we have vertical bone loss we have class 2 and 3 furcation involvement here in the furcation involvements uh, if you find class 2 or 3 furcation involvement definitely it is either stage 3 or stage 4 and here we have moderate bridge defects according to the radiograph actually so this is stage 3 and this is stage four. Here we have bite collapse, we have drifting, we have spacing, huge amount of spacing. We have less or nearly 20 teeth remaining. Most of the teeth are gone due to periodontal disease. So this is stage four. What are the main features that identify periodontitis? How we say that this case is periodontitis case? Actually, the primary features, including the loss of periodontal tissue support, manif manifests through the clinical attachment loss. So we should have attachment loss. We should have called clinical attachment loss. And we should have radiographic bone loss, which indicating the pocketing uh, or uh, and gingival bleeding. A patient defined as a periodontitis case if the cal, the interdental cal, is detectable at, at two or more non adjacent teeth. Okay, and the buccal or oral cal is more than three three millimeter, with pocketing of of more than four millimeter is detectable at two or more teeth. So this is the definition of periodontitis. But this cal, this clinical attachment loss, can't be ascribed to any other causes. For example. It shouldn't be happened due to gingival recession of traumatic origin or dental caries. It should be specifically due to periodontal disease. Or cal on the distal aspect of the second molar and associated with the malposition or extraction of the third molar. So, as we say that the tooth loss should be due to periodontitis, so the recession also should be due to periodontitis, not the traumatic cause. Grading. Into grading, 
the gradient will measure the, the progression rate of the disease, how speed the destruction of that disease. Is it slow, is it moderate, or it is rapid? The primary criteria of this is detected either, either by direct evidence of the progression or indirect evidence. For the direct evidence, you should have data and you should check up your patient uh, each six months, for example, or, or yearly, annually, to detect the amount of progression of the disease that you have. For example, in this case, we have a grade A or slow rate progression if we have an evidence of no loss over five years. There is no bone loss over five years. And uh, for the moderate one, which is most of the people are in this grade, we should have two millimeter or less over five years. This is less than two millimeter over five years. But for grade C, rapid progression, we have two millimeter and more over five years. So this is rapidly progressive. And regarding the percentage of bone loss, we have an equation. The percentage of bone loss, for example, 15%. We have 15%. And uh, the age of the patient, for example, is 20. So the rate of bone loss, 15 over 20, will equal to one of these results. For example, if the result come out with 0.25 and less, it is grade A. If it is 0.25 to 1, it is grade B. And more than 1 in the equation, it means that this is grade C. Okay? For the indirect evidence of progression, also, uh, we use the bone loss per age and the case phenotype. As we talked about this here in this formula, and the case phenotype, in the grade A, we find that the patient have more plug with less destruction. But in grade B, we have uh, the, the amount of plug is um, equal, for example, to amount of destruction or nearly the same. We have bacteria, we have destruction. But in case grade C, we have minimum amount of a plug, but we have a, a greater amount of destruction. So that, that puts in your mind that this case may be progressive, the types of bacteria may be the, the most destructive one. The grade modifiers here in the grades, we have risk factors. In the workshop, they reached to a conclusion that smoking and diabetics are the two major risk factors on the periodontal disease. The grade A are non-smokers, while grade B we, we say that this case is grade B when we smoke 10 cigarettes and less per day. While grade C, more than 10 cigarettes a day should be reported as grade C. When you take into consideration this equation and this, then these risk factors. Because, for example, if the case is normal, but he's a smoker, he can't quit smoking. The risk factor is always present, and the destruction will be present always. So you should take it as a one package, and you decide by all of these elements. And the, in the diabetics, when you take uh, a three-month measurements of normal glycemic, there is no diagnosis of diabetics, but grade B, 
HbA one c is less than 7% in patients with diabetic, but in grade C, uh, it's more or equal than 7% in patients with diabetic. What does gradient involve? The gradient involved history-based periodontitis progression, which is the, the direct the direct one, like this, the direct evidence of progression, this is history-based, and risk of further periodontitis progression, which is the risk of modifiers, uh, will determine that, and risk that the disease or its treatment may negatively affect the general health of the patient. It will tell us that this disease and its treatment is it effect on general health or not as we know the periodontitis will affect the general health so the rapid progression the more destruction one destructive one okay and the types of the treatment that's that are used is it affecting the bodies or the treatment that patient have or not okay the grade can be revised after you assess initial treatment response and the risk factor control. You can recheck it after the initial diagnosis. Why chronic and aggressive periodontitis became just periodontitis? Why they conjugated these two terms? Why it, it isn't remained as separate entities? Because they found during these 20 years that there is no evidence for specific pathophysiology that can that can distinguish between the between the two between both of them. For example, both of them having the same kinds of bacteria, uh, and in both of them, the main causative factor are bacteria, and both of them have has the same risk factors but there's some genetic variation some uh, for example in the aggressive periodontitis previously the locations and types of bone destruction sometimes differ but as a concept pathophysiologically as a disease it has the same pathogenesis uh, plus some genetic uh, orientation of the disease. So both of these are grouped under the single category of periodontitis. And they are further characterized based on the multidimensional staging and grading system. So till here, it was the staging and grading i hope that you you get benefit from it uh, and i will not make it too long for you to be understandable and don't forget please to subscribe to hl talent to get more videos about this subject thank you for your listening